Good morning, afternoon, everybody. My name is Mark Benet, and I had my bike stolen last night. <laughs> oh man, you notice that I'm smiling about it. That is an enigma. When I first noticed that my bike was stolen, I was walking out of my restaurant to ride my bike home after work. It was probably gosh, 2 a.m. The thing is, I wait tables on the patio and when I first started locking my bike up outside in front of the restaurant, I, my rational mind said it's no problem because it's locked and it's right there. I can see it while I work. But the thing about my restaurant is it gets busy, and I never look over there to check it out. So it was this kind of false supposition on my part. And although the tips were good last night, it wasn't very busy. So if I were more mindful, I could have watched. But it's strange that I put myself in that position, in that situation where I would leave my bike out there exposed, even locked though, and have to be concerned about it. Why didn't I just take it inside, down to the basement, to the restaurant? I was told at one point I could have done that, but I was like, ah, it's not going to get stolen. I have a chain, I have a one of those steel coiled locks. It's not a chain per se. It's not a U-lock. It's one of these guys, steel inside. I love riding a bike. It's just, there's so many reasons it's so good. Right? First of all, I don't have any need for a car. I don't want to pay for a car. I don't want to pay for gas. I don't want to pay for insurance. I don't want to pay for parking. I don't want to try to find a place to park. <laughs> right? I just don't have any need for it, and I definitely don't want to do all the, the manual labor, because I'm a blue collar waiter. I don't want to do all the work that's required to have a car. I've had a car a couple times in my life. On the other hand, a bike, a hybrid bike that's like a 10 speed but can go off road, yet it's still good on streets and can handle potholes, so you can go fast and it's still relatively light. It's so nice. And you, and you could, here's what I love about it. You put on some great tunes, you have your yellow glasses. And you're going really fast, and you're doing it all through the power of your body, right? So it's, you know, you're really feeling yourself. You're feeling all the chemicals and the hormones and all that stuff, and you're feeling a full body exertion, whereas by contrast, in a car, you're just steering the wheel and pressing the gas or the brake. Or if you're in a subway or a bus, you're doing nothing. So it's great, you know? And once, I, and this was a, a Walmart bike that I bought for a hundred bucks, and it served me well. And when I was using it in North Carolina, it paid off itself in, in two and a half months. And I brought it here to New York, and I was using it to go from the Bronx to Harlem, and it was just like, wow, great. Fifteen minutes, to and from. And so, um, last night when I walked out, it was one of those Twilight Zone moments. <laughs> I went up to where my bike was supposed to be, and it wasn't there. There was another bike there. And so my mind did like a double take. I'm like, that's not my bike. Where's my bike? And it was it's so bizarre to have two apparently contradictory feelings at the same time. Or they were just like, maybe not at the same time, maybe just back to back, but then they became rotating back and forth and just oscillated in simultaneity. 
How often do you get to say that? Oscillated in simultaneity. I mean, it's worth getting the bike stolen just for that. My two feelings oscillated. My two contradictory feelings oscillated in simultaneity. <laughs> I'm grateful for that expression, just as I'm grateful for the title of this Improvisutra, which is Bummed Out About My Stolen Bike. That is such a beautiful title, and I'm very much into titles, and I want to tell you why I'm excited about titles. A title is a world. A title is, rea is a reality. It's a microcosm slash macrocosm. Let me explain to you the kind of joie de vivre of a title. So, bummed out about my stolen bike. There's the B of bummed, there's the B of about, and there's the B of bike. B, bummed out about my stolen bike. So, ba, ba, ba. And it's like beginning, middle, and Bs. Okay? I'm having to look at the title while I talk about it. Okay, but then after the B, there's m m m m m m. So B is a labial, and M I don't know the technical word for that. Uh, this, what that consonant is called, but the labial of a B, and then the m bummed out. So there's that M, and then the M is revisited with my. So bummed out about my stolen bike. So B M B M B. B M B M B. Bummed out about my stolen bike. And then inside of that, you have these T's. You have three T's. Bummed out about my stolen bike. So out about t, stolen. T. And then check this out. Bummed out about. So out is repeated twice. So that is one of the great fruits and gifts of my spike getting stolen. I get an amazing title. <laughs> so, as I was having these two apparently contradictory feelings oscillating in simultaneity, I was there. I was in a state of marvel and dismay. Those are the two contradictory feelings. I'm like, what the fuck? My bike is not there. Now, I've never, I can't remember ever having a bike stolen from me. I'm, I have been very lucky. Like, I, I have never been jumped or robbed or anything like that. I don't know, I don't have these bad things happen to me, really. So when they do happen to me, it's just like, what? WTF, what? My bike is not there? And so immediately I do a catalog <laughs> in my mind. I'm like, did I park it right? there? Is that where I left it? Did I park it somewhere else? Did I actually ride my bike to work? <laughs> did I really ride it? Did I walk? Did I take the subway? How did I get to work? Oh, I rode my bike. I remember. I, I rode up to work. I remember parking it here and locking it and double checking the lock. Because it's a new lock because I lost my old lock. I don't know where it is. It might have slipped and fell, fallen into a crack somewhere. So maybe I'll find it. But it's interesting that my old lock is lost or misplaced. And I'm using a new lock, which is actually a lock from many years ago that I had in storage and brought out of storage. And then I noticed when I started using this new old lock again that it wasn't fastening when I was closing it. And I was like, okay, so I gotta be diligent about that. I gotta make sure it's fastened. So I fasten it and then I pull on the fasten. The thing about when I park my bike is that I've been parking it there for a few months, Friday and Saturday nights, with a coil lock. It's, you know, it's really sturdy, but it's on a scale of one to five, it's like a two or a three as far as security rating is going. So, um, the the fact of the matter is that even though I double checked to see if it were fastened, it was. Uh, someone probably just came and clipped it because if they're out there scavenging for bikes, 
they could see a routine. They could say, okay, this bike is here Friday and Saturday nights. All I need to do is bring a pair of cutters. And that's, that's probably what happened. The, bike, the lock was not there. They took the lock with them, which made me think maybe I didn't fasten it. But the truth is, they wouldn't be able to use the lock anyways, because they didn't have a key. Anyways, so I'm there, and lately uh, I've been reading this great book. Um, really, it's like a spiritual masterpiece, I've just noticed. I'm just two chapters into it, but I'm blown away by it. It's called How to Make a Profit, How to Make a Hell of a Profit and Still Get to Heaven. And it talks about the principle of fair exchange. And like, you know, when you offer a service, payment is due, and it's a payment that's proportional to the service offered, and it needs to be for both parties. And because once you violate that principle on either side of the giver or the receiver, then an imbalance is created that needs to be compensated but it's for, but that compensation doesn't happen in a healthy way, you know? So um, people will feel resentment or in a sense of injustice, or they'll feel ripped off, or they'll feel undervalued, uh, whatever it is, but something is telling them, you know what, this is not a fair exchange. Either I've been given too much, or I'm giving too much, you know, and the compensation is not proportional, it's not equal. So <laughs> what I do is I apply the principle of fair exchange to an event that is not a fair exchange. Like I walked out, boom. I'm feeling this marvel and dismay simultaneously. My bike is gone. Now that is like someone coming up to me and taking my right arm, not my left arm, because I use my right arm more. I could probably get by without my left arm. It's, it's, I don't like thinking about that, but someone comes up and just takes my left arm. I'm like, hey, yo, I need your left arm more than you do. Sorry. Detaches it and goes off and sells it or attaches it to their body and now they have three arms, like a twisted bodhisattva. And maybe they're trying to be a bodhisattva with hundreds of arms and like going out to different people and say, can I have your left arm? Boom, and they put it on their body and pretty soon they have a hundred left arms. And they think that the end justifies the means. And now they're this great bodhisattva of Alakitishvara with hundreds of arms doing all this good in the world. But in, in the process, there are a lot of people now hundreds of people who only have one arm and they're in a lot of pain because their left arm has been ripped off. It's like Thanos and the Avengers Infinity War. This guy wants to get all six infinity stones and put it in his gauntlet and then he wants to kill off half the universe because he thinks this is the how to help the universe in the long run because once you know, the universe gets overrun, or these planets get overrun, then it creates all sorts of chaos and instability and misery, which is what happened on his home planet. It's dumb. It's a dumb idea. I mean, I can understand why some screwed psychopath would think that way, but the, the real thing is, like, he would go to these planets and he would literally kill off half the population. In ancient Rome, they had this thing called decimation which means to kill every tenth person. That's where the word decimate comes from. Well, he's called doing half a mation, which is killing off half of the universe, this Thanos guy. And I'm thinking to myself, what? You're creating real-time, completely present misery by killing half people for some abstract notion in the, in the future? Basically, his principles are more important than the people in front of him. He doesn't realize that the principles are supposed to serve, in his own mind, the people of the future, so he's killing the, half the people of the present to benefit the lives of the people in the future. But here's the thing, he's going to have to do it again and again and again. Half a mate, the whole universe. So this person who's stolen my left arm, who's stolen my bike, is going to create a bodhisattva of bikes, not thinking it through. So me, I am thinking it through. I'm really working with this. Because I need the principle of fair exchange, even though this is not a fair exchange. Like that person's out there riding my bike or sold my bike, and I'm here trying to compensate for the fact that my left arm is taken out of my body. And I'm bleeding. 
and half the universe is going to die because of it, right? And so what I do is I really start contemplating it. I start to generate a, a field of richness around this because I'm going to amplify my wealth by contemplating the shit out of this and learning it, learning from it as a way to increase the kind of richness of my interiority by contemplating the universe from an entirely new angle. Like, I don't get to contemplate the universe from this angle where someone just fucking rips out my left arm and rides off on it. <laughs> and then puts it on Craigslist or puts it in his back to become a, a bodhisattva or kills half the universe. I mean, I don't get to look at it from those perspectives, but I am now. And so when I, I was like, ah, shit. And so I went back into the restaurant and I went straight up to my manager and I said, yo, someone stole my bike. Do we have video cameras that can actually check and see who that person is? And he was like, well, he probably don't really, probably doesn't get that angle. So he said that he would take a look at it for me on the cameras, which was really nice of him. And so I was like, okay. It's like two in the morning or something like that. And I'm like, okay, I'll go walk to the bank so I can deposit my money. And then I walk all the way, a long way to get to the subway station, which is fine. I like walking in the city at two in the morning, two to three in the morning. And I get down on the subway. It's freaking hot. I'm not a big fan. Of I used to be a fan of the subway, but I'm not when I have a bike. Because the subway is very passive. I'm just sitting there roasting and do nothing and I'm just being transported to another place. <laughs> you know, I'm actually grateful for that. But that's not my preferred way of travel. And it just so happens that while I'm waiting for the train to pick me up at 2.30 in the morning, whatever it happens to be, I'm down deep inside the subway on the lowest platform. Actually, is that the lowest platform? No, there's one. The train going southbound into downtown Manhattan is the lowest platform. So anyways, I, what I like to do is I like to circumambulate the platform until the train comes. I just like to be on the move because I have a lot of energy. I gotta circulate that shit. And um, I'm walking around and then I see two cops. I have mixed feelings about cops. <laughs> I really do. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just bookmark that. And my thing is that I really just love human beings. Now, human beings may start to get into various role-playing jobs for their career that I strongly disagree with. That's as much as I'm gonna say. I went up to these two cops, and I love them as human beings. One dude, his name was his last name was Vega. And I just said, hey guys, walked up to him. How are you? And they're there, they're kind of like tra transit officers. They're just making sure everything's cool. And I tell them a story. I said, like, what do I gotta do? Or what are the probabilities, first of all, of finding someone if they've stolen their bike? Maybe they're on camera. And we start talking, and they're really nice cops. Very nice cops. Vega is actually taking a, a real interest in me. It's not just like, oh, here's this dude bothering me. <laughs> it's like, really, you could tell that I'm a decent human being, and Vega's a decent human being, and his co-worker, the other cop's a decent dude. He's got two different colored eyes, which is really wild. I'm just looking at him. I'm like, wow, you got two different colored eyes, and you got a bulletproof vest. <laughs> and he's sweating. We're all sweating. It's freaking August. It's in the subway. And I've got a sweatshirt on because it's what I use when I bike as an extra layer of skin if I crash, which I have done multiple times. Vega tells me all the different things. I could file a report with him and then he was gonna take the Union Square, right? And file a report there and then I have to go to Union Square, blah, 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 blah. And then I'm like, I don't wanna go through all that. I like don't want any more bureaucracy. I had a roommate, really great woman. She's telling me how I could buy a whole batch of black beans and cook them all at once so I wouldn't have to cook that. I was like, listen, that's just too complicated. I can't be bothered with cooking a whole batch of black beans. That's how I look at things. I'm just like, I can't be bothered. Unless if I'm really inspired to do something, I can be bothered because it's no bother. I'm not going to file a police report with Vega. 
But it was cool. He showed concern. And before I got in the subway, though, I had been walking across town up at the tip of Manhattan. Well, not the very most tip, uh, but 125th Street. And I've been thinking, and the principle of fair exchange is like, you know, you services paid for services rendered, and both parties have got to feel that they have got equal value from the exchange. Well, there's no equal value here. There was an exchange, and it was definitely not fair. The exchange was, this fucker got my bike. <laughs> Fuck you, you took my bike. Now, now I'm trying to make it balanced. Now I could get all, I could get all dissociated about this, and I'm sure a lot of you want to give me advice that would dissociate me from my pain, and I'm not going to do that. But thank you. What I notice in my meditation, it's it's unsettled, because what's happened is that there's been an exchange, and it's grossly unfair. I don't care how you want to rationalize it. This dude did not ask me for my bike. He took it from me. I, I'm sorry, and that's almost sexist. It could have been a woman. I'm not going to presume it's just a man who stole my bike. Um, could have been a woman. And so what happens is my system tries to compensate. It tries to generate a form of wealth from the privation, from the deficit that's been created. So while I'm walking across town, I'm like really grokking my interiority and trying to find out, you know, lessons, wisdom, valuable points. But the very first thing that comes to me is how I have a desire to evade the pain and how I have a desire to get out of the pain of having my left arm taken from me. Do you know what I mean? Because I loved my bike even though it was a cheap piece of shit. I love that because I mean it wasn't a cheap piece of shit for my heart. It was just monetarily a cheap <laughs> piece of shit. And um, fine. You know that and that was kind of interesting too. I was like I also realized I made a mistake in my calculations. I was like, ah, it doesn't matter if it gets stolen. Just a hundred dollar bike. I can leave it up out here on the street level with a steel coil lock. If it gets stolen, it's okay. It's only a hundred dollars. Don't ever think that way. Because when it get, gets stolen, it feels like shit inside. It's not a fair exchange. And then you gotta go buy another bike. And you gotta buy another lock. So be smart. Don't do what I did. If you have an opportunity to store your bike in the basement of whatever building, <laughs> do that. Don't get it stolen. Um, anyways, do you see this? I think it's rather remarkable that the principle of fair exchange is in effect. It's just that now I'm trying to generate the wealth that would be equivalent to the wealth that was taken from me. And it's not, it still will not be, ever be fair because I'm not doing this on terms that I have chosen. I'd rather not be doing this. There's pain. And don't tell me to evade my pain because you're evading your pain by telling me to evade my pain. There is pain here, right? You don't want me to feel pain. So you're gonna give me these principles for evading my pain. I'm gonna say no and we'll feel that pain because evading pain is it just another meta level of pain? My mom's 82. When she dies, are you going to tell me not to feel that pain? Or are you going to just step into that pain with me? Because being real with our pain, being real with our pain, makes us all the more present. That's, what, that's where the real wealth is, right? That's why how I balance this equation. I get really present with everything. Really present with my pain of having my left arm ripped off. Really present with the pain of trying to balance this equation that sucks ass. And then when I get into that pain, I can feel compassion for other people who are having pain. Because if I'm always evading my pain, well fuck all you people in your pain. I don't want to feel your pain because I'm evading my pain. But if I can really be in my pain, I can be with you in your pain. And I can be with you in your pain when you want to have all these principles that evade pain altogether. If you really want to evade pain, go live in a mountain. In a cave in a mountain. Well, fuck it, go live in a mountain. Just to hollow out that mountain and live in the fucking center of it. And feel the pain of not being able to be with other human beings because they've got pain. And you're like, fuck it, I can't be with them. Oh, it hurts. 
Live in your mountain. Just kidding. Come out here and play with us. Feel your pain with me. Thank you for watching today, everybody. Have a wonderfully beautiful day.